what are the most valuable lessons I've taken away from over a decade of being an entrepreneur? I've been an entrepreneur for this entire decade and even longer than that. And so while my entrepreneurial journey doesn't map exactly onto the whole decade, for sure, most of it does, because at the beginning of this decade, I was still mostly struggling. I was still very new to this. And so I've been asking myself, what are the most important lessons I've learned? Like looking back at the whole decade, what is the greatest value I can extract from that and pass on to anyone, whether you're early on in the journey or whether you also have been doing this for a while? As you can imagine, I could talk about this for a long time since I'm looking back at the long period. But for this video, I asked myself, what are the three most valuable and most important things? So let's get into that right away. My first point is really important and I think it addresses a myth in our culture. So over the last 10 years, I have done many entrepreneurial ventures and some of them I've done completely by myself as a solopreneur, meaning that I literally did and managed every aspect of a business project. And I have been reasonably successful with solo projects like that, but this is important. It is hard to overstate how much more successful my business projects have been where I have had a partner. Building a business together with the right kind of person or the right kind of people makes all the difference in the world. If you know me, you most likely know me from Thrive Themes, where for a long time I was the face of that business. And so it could look like Thrive Themes is just like my business, that I built it up by myself. But that is simply not true, because first of all, I built that together with Paul, my business partner. He's my founding partner for Thrive Themes, so he's been there since day one. And we started with just three or four people, I think. And now it's more than 70 people and everybody's contributing to what Thrive Themes is now. What I'm trying to say here is that by myself, I could never create something like Thrive Themes. And let me be clear, I'm not just talking about like hiring people and outsourcing stuff here, even though that can be a really important aspect for scaling up a business. It often is, right? As you scale a business, you often get to that point where you have to get people on board in order to take this to the next level. But more importantly than that, I'm talking about partnerships. I'm talking about finding someone who has complementary skills to your own and starting with them. Now, of course, it's not easy to find the right kind of person to build a business with. In fact, as Paul often tells me, entering in a, into a business relationship is kind of like entering into a marriage. It's, it's this commitment where you really want to be sure that you're doing it with the right person. And needless to say, there's no shortcut or hack to find the right business partner right away but it is so useful to have good business partners that it is worth whatever effort it takes to find them. I think it's a bit of a myth about entrepreneurship in our culture that it's kind of this solo thing, right? That this, this lone, we usually have these kind of lone hero images of you know, the genius entrepreneur, or the genius inventor, the genius CEO. And we like to think that the entire success of a company hinges on this one person. But I think that is simply a myth. It is an easier story to tell to say, oh, this one genius is leading us into the future or whatever with their inventions or with their business. But in truth, even the typical kind of poster children of genius entrepreneurs have huge teams behind them. And that includes teams of people who are essentially on the same level as them. And yes, yeah, solo, you just cannot achieve what you can achieve with the right kind of team. So my takeaway lesson for this would be to invest in this aspect. I don't neglect this aspect. Invest time and effort into getting the right kind of people around you. And when you meet the right kind of person, when someone comes along who is the right match in terms of their personality, in terms of their values and work ethic, then bring them on board as a partner. Be generous with that. You know, don't try to skimp and underpay someone who could be a valuable business partner. And to just add a brief bonus tip on that, the number one thing I look for before I look at anything else, when I choose or decide whether someone is good as a business partner is work ethic. I only want to have someone as a business partner who has extreme, extraordinary work ethic. And this as a primary filter has served me really well so far.
And speaking of generosity, this nicely leads to my second main takeaway for the decade. So, of course, I have met and worked with and interacted with tons of other entrepreneurs over the years. And one thing I've noticed is that there are many of them who are far greedier than I am. And I mean that not necessarily in a disparaging way. I simply notice that a lot of entrepreneurs are just much more money focused than I am comfortable with being. Which is to say that often it's just like, hey, as long as you get paid, it's fine, right? Whatever you do, even if it's a bit scammy or even if it's, you know, not maybe not the most ethical thing, hey, as long as it's successful, you know, as long as you're making loads of money, it's all good. And for me, that has never really been an option. I've always wanted to make sure that I really build businesses that are based on good products and, and a good customer experience and so on. Now, I really don't mean to say that, I know that this can come off as kind of like I'm just tooting my own horn and saying, hey, look at me, I'm so ethical, I'm the good guy, my products are good and so on. That's really not what I mean. Let's be clear, right? We live in a capitalist society and under capitalism, it's like, yeah, as long as you make money, we kind of worship money as well. So it's like, as long as you make money, that's good. That's success. It's all fine. And so I think that it's also understandable that people feel that way and are just like pursuing money. The reason I'm mentioning this is connected to actual business success and to Warren Buffett's wager. If you're not familiar with this, it's fun to read up on, but very briefly, Warren Buffett made a bet that if he simply buys an index tracking fund, that over the course of 10 years, it would beat hedge funds. And he basically invited hedge funds to compete. So it's an index tracking fund versus a managed fund that seeks to maximize gains. And Warren Buffett, by just making the one super simple investment and holding onto it for 10 years, won the bet. When you think about it, that is crazy because you have entire companies whose jobs it is to analyze the markets, to stay up on top of news and trends and, and everything going on all across the globe, to crunch massive amounts of numbers, to find out which stocks to pick and which ones to drop. And in all this activity, which is all about picking the winners, all about outperforming the market, all this flailing about, and these are, these are highly paid people in expensive suits whose opinions are often requested on TV and so on, right? These are like important people. All they're flailing about, all their profit seeking ends up not beating the simplest investment you can make. This is kind of crazy and it, it's something worth thinking about. And looking back at my decade, I feel like I've noticed a similar thing because a lot of entrepreneurs who are much more profit focused than me, who at any given moment during the past 10 years would have been doing something to maximize their profits that I'm not doing would have been going after money more than me. But in the end, most of them don't have as solid, as successful, or as profitable a business as I have now. So what's the lesson here? You know, is it, is it a lack of greed that has made me more successful? I don't think so. I think what it is, is that over the long term, investing in a quality product, investing in a solid, like real business, investing in a good customer experience over the long term, that beats short-term profit seeking. And one of the reasons I want to mention this is because when you become an entrepreneur and you start out hanging with other entrepreneurs, especially if you come from like the maybe affiliate marketing or Amazon marketing corners, you might feel kind of the peer pressure to just go for the profit, right? Just exploit whatever loophole you can find to make as much money as possible. You might feel pressured into that direction. And also when you learn about marketing, you learn about conversion optimization, you learn about copywriting, you might feel yourself pushed towards like hard selling, fake scarcity, all this kind of, you know, Russell Brunson funnel type stuff. And you might feel uncomfortable. I know a lot of people feel uncomfortable with that. And so my main message is you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to be greedy and profit seeking. You can build a sustainable long-term business. Maybe it takes a bit longer, but over the span of a decade, you're not missing out. My third main takeaway from the decade also has to do with this, with what I would call playing the long game. So investing in something and sticking with it long-term consistency pays off in ways that I find hard to describe. Because the craziest thing about this to me is if I look at how far I've come in the last 10 years, my business has completely transformed my life. 
and I've gone from almost zero, like I said, at the beginning of the decade, I was pretty new to this. So I've gone from almost zero to having built several multi-million dollar businesses, but more importantly, to, having, to being in a position in life where I just have all the freedom I could possibly want. And this is amazing. So, you know, I can, I can basically work from wherever I want. I get to work on projects that I enjoy. I basically get to choose who I work with, what I work on, and so on. It's been absolutely amazing. But the crazy thing about it is that at any given moment in the last 10 years, I have so often felt stuck. I have so often felt frustrated with how slowly things are progressing. I felt frustrated about things like, you know, whether it's with Thrive Themes or, or just other software projects where we have ideas for new products or new features we want to build and it just seems to take too long or we're trying to grow our team and hire more people and it just takes so long to find the right people to get them onboarded and so on and so forth so many things seem to just drag on and on and on so in the moment so often i felt like we're just stuck and also over the last 10 years i cannot count how often i have failed i cannot count how many projects just never came to fruition how many things we started, we tried, and then just through all kinds of circumstances, sometimes our fault, sometimes outside of our control, things just go horribly wrong. And it's like somehow, even though the moment-to-moment -moment experience can feel so slow and so frustrating, and even though there's so many failures, over the long term, here's where we go. And that works when you're playing the long game. So this is, I think, where a value-based business works because if you're saying, okay, the long-term goal is we want to serve our customers well with a product that matters, with a product that's good, and we want to build that up, if we keep our eyes on that goal and we just keep grinding through whatever obstacles come up, whatever problems come up, we just keep going, in the long-term, that works out really well. And that is despite, like I said, the moment-to-moment -moment experience often feeling slow and stuck and frustrating. And what's important here is that to realize that even if you are feeling stuck, even if things seem to be going slowly, it's really important to sometimes look back six months, 12 months, two years, three years, and look at how much progress have I made. Because if you pivot too often, if you change directions too often, or if you give up too soon, then you'll never get these long-term cumulative benefits. Another way to think of this is that if I went by the feeling, I would have given up many times over. If I went by just how it feels to me in the moment, I would have often just felt like this is not going anywhere, this is a complete failure, and I would have walked away. My main takeaway for this third point is actually in two parts. So the first is that this works if you invest in something that's long-term and sustainable. If your business is based on exploiting some loophole or something, obviously once the loophole is closed, the whole thing collapses and you have to start over. But something like serving a specific customer well, that is a long-term thing. That's not just going to disappear from one moment to the next. The second is to invest in skills. Invest in your own skills. Invest in the skills of people who work with and for you. Because that's the most powerfully cumulative thing you can invest in. See, this is one of the things that explains why feeling stuck in the moment can still lead to massive success over the span of years. It's because even for projects that failed, even for things that didn't work out, I was always trying to up my skill. I was always trying to improve. And so even if a project fails, I've still become a slightly better marketer, a slightly better entrepreneur, a slightly better video creator, whatever it is. I'm still making progress. So even from a failure, I take something away that I can invest and profit from in the next attempt, in the next project, and the next thing I'm doing. So there you go. Those are my three main takeaways for the decade. I hope that this sparks some ideas for you. I hope that you can take something for this. And wherever you are, I wish you all the best on your own entrepreneurial journey. Leave a comment below letting me know your own main takeaways from the decade and let me know which of these three points resonated with you the most. Also, a very special thank you for those people, and I know there are a few in the audience, who have been with me for the entire decade. I really, really appreciate all the support, all the feedback, and of course, I appreciate your business if you've been one of my customers. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one.